So it should be one attack, which is nothing against Eagle Warriors, even with all these extra attack upgrades. And those archers are just melted. There's none left. Wow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second game in the King of the Realms tournament. This is going to be the finals. It's a best of seven series between Doubt and Bacti. D Doubt did take a very quick first game. This game will not be as quick as this is Regicide Fortress. Very interesting map. We have Doubt playing as the Dark Age. He's actually playing as the Dravidians, a civilization I have not yet seen. And his opponent playing as the Incas. We all know the Incas. There's their free llama. It's a black llama. <laughs> Blueberry bush. Okay, it's pretty funny. Stone mines and the gold mines in the wood are still the same. But uh, a few of these food sources are different, which is uh, pretty unique. As you can see, this version of Regicide Fortress, no fish in the middle, so that's not unfair. Usually on Regicide Fortress, you go up to the next age, maybe you make some of your unique unit, build a few town centers, and really boom up. And I'm going to put the game speed on those 60, those 68 until some action happens. So they'll be going through a standard Regicide Fortress build, place a lot of your villagers on farms, go up to the next age, around 20 villagers, mine 50 stone, yada yada yada. And I'm curious to see if they make their unique units, because I'm not exactly sure what the unique unit for the Dravidians is. Let's take a look at their tech tree. So the Dravidians, Town Centers spawn one villager in Feudal and Castle Age. That's very interesting. Town Centers built in Castle Imperial Age spawn two villagers. So this is a very strong economy but bonus. Very good booming civilization because of that, and I can see why Doubt has chosen them for Regicide Fortress, and as well as playstyle. The Archer Line benefits double from Bodkin Era Bracer and Chemistry. That's really incredible. Let's take a look at their Archer Line. They only get the Archer upgrade. They don't get Crossbow or Arbalest. That is, that is very interesting. Let's take a look at their uh, Blacksmith upgrades as well. No Ring Archer armor. So these are some... These are some strong, but at the same time, very flaky archers. Elephant archers plus 15 to 20% HP in Castle Age. I'm wondering, is that the unique unit or... Oh no, there. So elephant archer is a uh, common unit now. So we can see here, heavy mountain archer, 300 HP. It's very similar to the Indian's elephant archer, maybe with a little more melee armor. And a little more expensive. So they're, they have more HP for the civilization. Their unique unit is the Varu. Looks like some sort of elephant type unit that's extremely expensive, but look at that HP! 600 HP. Elite, 800 HP. Wow. And their unique techs. Warships, extra HP. Infantry, cavalry, plus two attack. Siege is very lackluster. Monks, not so good. Navy's good. Cavalry is very lackluster. No bloodlines. So the strength here, their elephant unique unit. We'll see how that comes into effect. Their infantry is passable. Their archers are very unique. But certainly I think that Doubt chose the civilization for their economy bonus. Villagers automatically spawning from their town center. One in feudal age, one in castle age, and two for every new town center. The Incas... I think we should know the Incas pretty well. Houses support extra population. They're a mezzo-civilization. Uh, they start with the free llama. Receives recede faster, which is probably one of the most useless bonuses in the game. And uh, what else am I missing for the Incas? Their eagle warriors are pretty strong with their unique tech. But they're a very versatile civilization with two unique units. The Kamayuk, which could be good against elephants, I suppose. Although I'm not exactly sure, these uh, stats are kind of off, you know, really weird. I wonder how their Eagle Warriors will do against the Dravidian Archers. And that all... Back to, uh... Back to wondering why he doesn't have any boars. Does he have boars? Oh, both of his boars are the... Oh my god, they're all at the bottom here. Another bad start for Bacti. That's unfortunate for him. Last game, he didn't see his boars. Uh, last game, he didn't see one of his boar and his two sheep until very late. Now Bacti can see both boar are at the south. That hasn't put him at a disadvantage as far as uptime.
now, now, doubt now luring his second board. I guess what that'll mean is that these farms will expire a little bit sooner, which is not so great. Back to gonna get those boars now, it's better late than never. And King is gonna hold open the gate. So this shouldn't hurt back to you too much. He'll get those boars in. And get all that extra food that he needs. And there we go. Two extra villagers will be created. Market Blacksmith, most likely for both players. That is the classic boob build. And both players go to boom up for the time being. This is a very risky move for Doubt because the castle could have been right here. As Doubt sees those walls, he's going to run away with his king. And let's take a look at Doubt scouting. Both players going up to the next age very quickly. So this is back T scouting. Gonna grab another boar. Has not yet seen his uh, opponent, but does see that his one of his golds are outside of his walls. And another gold is to the north, and a stone is to the north. So these are important areas of Bacti's map that he'll have to secure in the late Castle Age, early Imperial Age. Doubt has seen much more of the map, has found his opponent only by one wall. He's the shoreline here. It has much more scouting information. I'm going to send a few villagers out to build his first town center. Or his second town center, better. And going to mine 50, gold, 50 stone. Once he's got enough gold for the next age, doesn't need any more gold. So this is going to be pure boom mode. No gold for his unique unit, though. Which I assume, if it's like an elephant, should be very slow and not too useful in the early castle age. So we're going to build this town center here to the right side. We'll secure gold. We'll secure a lot of farming space. A lot of wood. This would be a good spot for a town center as well. And he does have a gold outside of his walls to the north. The so Bosoff coming in automatically from Doubt. Back to you a little bit later with that. Back to you going to build one of his town centers to the south to help secure his wood line. And another town center to take stone and gold from. Heavy plow coming in from down. I like this upgrade. If you can ever afford heavy plow in the early castle age, it really helps you out later on. It's very difficult to afford it sometimes because, of course, you're going to need a lot of food for extra villagers. You need to get your bow saw upgrade. However, let's see. So some new villagers should be popping out of these town centers as soon as they are built. So four here. And there we go. So now there are six. So that is a pretty great economy bonus already. Seven villager lead for doubt just by placing those town centers. This is a very strong economy. Wow. And back to seven villagers. Well, five villagers behind now. So it should stabilize at about five villagers. Unless players decide to add more town centers. And remember, Doubt does have the Heavy Plow upgrade sooner. Players just booming. Wonder where Doubt has his Eagle. KD ratio is actually 0 to 1. Doubt probably lost his Eagle to the Boar, maybe. So that is not great as far as scouting information goes. You kind of want to know what your opponent is making as far as army. He's not really going to show it to you until the last second if you don't have a scout out on the field. That's a small disadvantage for Doubt. Actually, he's actually mining a lot of gold. So he's going to go with the monastery and try to secure some of those relics. Let's take a look at the relics on the map. One, two, three, towards the middle but closer to Doubt. And then Doubt has two relics that are extremely close together. Close to him, so that is a little bit of an unfair advantage for Doubt, as far as map generation is gone. Doubt gonna mine some stone, maybe he's thinking about another town center or a castle. And a monastery for Doubt as well. How can you not with all these relics right next to you? And an earlier wheelbarrow for Doubt. So Doubt has a better boom going. By far, still a five villager advantage for him. 
on Regicide Fortress, I do like to see four town centers. And there's the fourth town center for Doubt. Interestingly, in the same place. Has not changed the location of the town center. I would have assumed he would have placed it maybe in the north. To gain control of that gold, or over here to gain control of the stone. So this is the hub of where Doubt's economy is really going to be. Gold mining coming in for Doubt, just one step ahead as far as the economy upgrades. In fact, he's going to wall in this left side, which is good for him. First monks are out. A few Kamiuks to take map control and to explore a little bit more. Bacti, of course, still has a scout, so we'll be able to use that to hopefully prevent his opponent from taking the relics. So this is kind of like the first conflict of the game, is trying to get these relics. Make their economies as strong as possible. Now if you're back to usually you want to go back if they start the conversion, but perhaps that uh, monk didn't have its full range, or wasn't using its full range when it started the conversion. As well, there's just a big element of randomness. So Doubt is heavily onto stone. Maybe he's thinking about his unique unit, which is, again, an elephant with a huge HP pool. And he's also adding an archery range, so maybe think about those very powerful and flaky archers. Stone mining for back tea, all the economy upgrades. And Doubt should be advancing to the next age fairly shortly. So back tea, gonna take one of those relics. That's going to take the easy to get relic, and normally you go for the hard to get relic first. And back to controlling all of these different relics, it would be great if back to could get this one. That would steal one from his opponent. And back to going to be sooner into the next age. I think back to only went with three town centers, which explains why he's faster. That's less food you have to spend. That's not far behind at all, though. And with a 20 villager advantage, so I'd much rather be in Doubt's position. As far as economy goes, I don't know how the military matchup's going to go, though. As I've never seen this matchup, Incas versus Dravidians. So Doubt is going to open up with the Dravidian Archer. So let's see, we have Fletching done. Plus one, plus one. Take a look at that tech tree again. So only benefits double from Bodkin Error, Bracer, and Chemistry, not Fletching. So when we see the Bodkin Error, we should see extra, H, uh, extra attack coming in. And they're there, 4 plus 3, 4 plus 3. Certainly doing quite a bit of damage, but these uh, Kamiaks, of course, don't have any armor upgrades. They're not the natu natural counter to archers either. So, with uh, Bakhti's scouting information, you can see that his opponent has made archers. I assume Bakhti will make either Eagle Warrior or Onager. Got two Meganels out already. Now remember, these archers, they're not going to gain any more HP as this game goes on. They're stuck at 30 HP. Normally, an Arbalest, I think, has 40 HP. So with that, can mostly resist a Meganel shot. Unless you get hit straight on. But um, these archers will just crumble to Meganels. So I would go with the Ar Onager upgrade right away. Looks like we're going to see a trebuchet battle on this hill. And unfortunate for Bacti, it looks like Doubt's going to get his castle up sooner. Hello, Infernal Warlock. Welcome to the stream. We're casting the King of the Realms tournament. We're on game number two. Chemistry, thumb ring coming in. And with that, I think these archers are going to be fully upgraded except for the armor upgrades. Oh boy! Every Megano shot counts with archers as weak as these. They get a, then again, the archers do go down fast. Wow! Not too bad. So that's uh, four archers from two Meganos. That's not the best thing in the world. Interestingly, why is Bacti going Kamiyuks? That's not the strongest counter to archers, in my opinion. I would have gotten Eagle Warrior. And it looks like Bacti's going to lose his first castle. So a lot of momentum for Doubt. Doubt's got a 30 villager advantage. 
I think he's got the right army composition. He's going to take down the first castle of Bacti. Those Kamiuks just melt. Warriors coming in. Now, I do understand that. It gives the Kamiuks quite a bit of uh, armor. Helps them resist arrow fire better, but it's still not the... Not the counter you want to be having against archers. You know, Doubt's actually getting husbandry, so thinking about making his unique unit, Navaru. Hey, let's see what one of these bad boys looks like. <laughs> it's huge. Another castle will go down. Looks like those mangonels can't do anything. So the Varu, it's got more HP than a War Elephant. This is not an elite Varu, this is just a regular Varu. More HP, less attack. Uh, it's definitely more expensive than a War Elephant, which is... Uh, war Elephants are very expensive. And it's a little bit slower. Another castle coming up, but it looks like this one is going to be denied. These archers now with 4 plus 7 attack. So if an Arbalest has 6 attack... This is like an Arbalest with an extra 2 attack. That's a lot of attack for an archer type unit. Even a few scouts being made by Doubt. That's no animal, that's a monster! <laughs> that is true. Looks, uh, looks quite unnatural, if you ask me. Oh, did they attack with their tusks or the man on top? <laughs> Looks like one of the uh, what what are the elephants in Lord of the Rings? That's what I imagine. So Bacti could lose yet what a third castle. Finally, going to transition to Eagle Warriors. So Eagle Warriors with the Couriers upgrade ten armor. Usually they're great against archer units. So ten armor versus. 11 attack. That should be 1 damage for each eagle. That's going to be... Oh, I thought that was going to be better. So it should be 1 attack, which is nothing against eagle warriors, even with all these extra attack upgrades. And those archers are just melting. There's none left. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Varus, they're now elite, but they're so slow they can't catch the eagle warriors, and... Doubt is going to lose all of his trebuchets. That's a thousand wood, a thousand gold. Probably double that with all those archers that were lost. But now, Bacti needs a counter to the Varu. He lost three castles, so the Kamiyuk is not going to be as effective as it should be. I would think go monks. These units are so expensive that even one or two conversions really such a huge loss. Going to try to engage this head on. They are doing work, though. Yeah, I'm going to try to run away, but there's no point with this kind of unit. Finally, back to making heavy plow. That's a pretty big deal, considering how much we were uh, we were on. We were talking about the boom of these players. Two castles in the north. So it's important that back to keep these castles alive. So that he's able to, you know, keep building Kamiuks. And maybe this Kamiuk evil combination could really work for him. Take a look at how the map control looks like. So Doubt has an extra stone here in the bottom. Currently taking an extra gold in the north. This is actually back to East gold, so we won't count that. So Doubt is taking two extra resources on the map, which will bode well for his later game. Yes, this is Regicide Fortress. Nothing more, but just as soon as as soon as elephants come into the mix, then everyone's watching. I think I got a host. Does anyone know who hosted me? So I can pay them thanks. I know Bacti was streaming earlier, so perhaps it's him. Nothing more majestic than the world. Castle going to go down for Bacti, so Bacti has um sorry doubt has lost a lot of um. Lost a lot of momentum here. Oh, thank you, Bacti. Appreciate it. We're covering your games from the weekend, I believe. This is King of the Realms. 
This is the final games. A lot of people weren't here to cast it, so I'm covering the games now as a replay. We're on the second game, and this is Regicide Fortress. We had the Dravidians versus the Incas. It was a very, very boom-style game. Doubt had a lot of momentum in the beginning, and now it's been completely pushed back by Bakhti. We have the unique unit here for the Dravidians, it is the Elite Baru. A lot of HP, low, low attack for an elephant, extremely high cost, and very slow. And it looks like Bakhti's. Kamiuks are going to do some work, those archers are going down so fast. Another unique aspect to the Dravidians is that their archers benefit double from Bodkin Arrow, from Bracer, from Chemistry, but they're stuck at the Archer Upgrade. I don't hear anything. Who is casting? I haven't been watching this channel up in a while. Yeah, I've been keeping the channel active recently. We're doing two casts a week. And I hope the audio is fine. Let me, uh, let me ask. Okay, just want to make sure. Squire's Blast Burn is coming in. A lot of momentum for Bakhti as he's going against the castle. Okay, I wonder why that person's audio is not fine. Though. Anyway, this castle's going to go down for Bakhti, and Bakhti has 20 more villagers now. Which is surprising considering how strong the uh, Dravidia boom was. Now, Doubt going to go into Long Swordsman. I don't think they have any bonus for the... For the Dravidians, but it's a good a unit in this particular situation. However, Bakhti could switch into Slingers later on in the game. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Fighting elephants versus villagers. That is a massacre. So, elephant raids in the south. And uh, back to pushing with Rams in the north. So let's see what this two-headed swordsman switch can do for him. Oh, he's got they've got extra attack, okay, with their unique tech. Cavalry and infantry plus two attack. So that was very strong. They have no armor yet though, so not too beefy. The caveats are pretty good actually against standard infantry. They're surprisingly good. And now back to his clean this up. We'll probably set his targets on this castle. And now all the map control to back to you. Let's see. Taking that what's left of that gold. Not a lot, actually. Doubt didn't mind that stone in the south. We have sappers coming in. Sappers? What? Sappers coming in. Wow. Not an upgrade you see every day. So go try to go for this castle with some infantry and just very few rams. Meanwhile, Doubt now has the champion upgrade. Getting chainmail armor. So these are pretty strong. Usually there is someone coasting, yes. I'm hoping Bakhti gets this castle down because I like to see the uh, sappers upgrade in action. Of course these are Inca, Inca villagers too. So let's see, champion versus Kamiuk. The champ champion are going to win in the situation. I think Kamiuk are better once they get messed up. Yeah, those champions are doing work. Siege Ram now being done. That's a great upgrade to have. Back in the main base, remember this is Regicide. See a siege tower up. And Doubt's northern economy has been taken out. That's about... Zakata's being heavily raided. It's down to 70 villagers. Maybe could lose the game because of that. The champions are going to clean it up for now. Right now, Doubt's, um, Doubt's king is safe in his castle. And perhaps with this champion upgrade, he's looking to push back. It's really hard to go champions off of only 70 villagers. They're a very food-intensive unit. What is Sappers? Yeah, that's a uh, upgrade we don't see very often. Sappers is the tech from the castle. And, uh... Oh, shoot. Yeah, we don't see it that often that I have trouble finding it. It's right here. Villagers cost plus 15 damage when attacking buildings. Almost every civilization gets it. It's in the Byzantines, I think. So really, you only see that, I guess, with the Incas and the Spanish. 
Is this a new civilization? This is a civilization in the Realms mod. You can download the Realms mod in Voobly. Realms mod has been around since 2012 or, or uh, before then. And this was a recent tournament to showcase the mod. And there are a total of 41 civilizations in this mod. So this is what I'm talking about for back team. Now this should this should take care of any uh, any sort of champions here. That extra one range really helps a lot. However, we have a few more archers coming back out, and the archers really make short work of the Kamiyuks. And there's the GG right there. Doubt's gonna resign. His population has dropped too low. Can't make any archers anymore, and the siege rams are going to uh, basically bulldoze everything. So GG, good game, good game from Regicide Fortress. Score is now one one. And we'll be moving on to the next game. Let's take a look at the achievements. Yeah, Sapper's OP. So take a look at the economy from the beginning of the game. In the end, it ended up being a little more even. Of course, Dad, Doubt had the economy in the early game. And he had the faster age-ups from each... Uh, or actually, Bakhti had the faster age-ups, which is a little interesting. Considering uh, Bakhti didn't have as good of a start. Relics capture really adds up to a lot of gold at this stage of the game, and here's your timeline. 